In this demonstration, I'm going to show you about window browsing. Okay, so there are lots of different ways that you can organize and configure your setup and your view and your windows in Photoshop. So right now we just have one document open. I'm going to go down to my mini bridge and I'm going to open some other documents that just happen to be in my folder just to show you how you can get around. I'll open this one. I'm going to select it and then holding down the command key or the control key, I'm also going to select the uh, other document on the right. And so I'll go ahead and double click those and you'll see that <clears throat> what happens is it opens the pictures up in new tabs. And this is the default behavior now for CS6. So if you were on a Mac and you were accustomed to something different, then this is now the default behavior. Okay, so you'll notice that each picture is highlighted up in the top tab so that you know which one you're working on. You can see that the actual title of it will become brighter. All right, so that's the basic is how to get around in tabs. Now another way that you can look at your pictures is if you go up to uh, Window and you go to Arrange, you'll see that you have these other ways of tiling pictures. So let's say that I want to tile all of them vertically. I could click this and then you can see all of them side by side. You can also go ahead and arrange them horizontally and so forth. All right? There are lots of different ways that you can configure and arrange these um, and it really just depends on what it is that you're trying to do. Okay, so another thing that you can do is you can say float in window. Okay, and what it does is it takes the currently selected picture and it just floats the one picture so you can move it around independently. You'll, you'll see later that one of the nice things about this is that if you want to drag something and copy it into another file just by taking like your move tool for instance and just moving it into another file, that's kind of handy to do whenever you have them side by side. In tabbed uh, browsing, it's a little bit harder. You have to make specific selections, do a copy, and then do a paste. This is kind of nice because you can just drag and drop. Um, so if I wanted to go back to Window Arrange, I could say Tile All Vertically again, and now it doesn't float any of the windows. I could also go back, of course, Arrange, and I could say Float All in Windows, and you can see that now I've got each one of them independently that I can move them around however I wish. Okay, so that's something that's pretty basic um, about moving your windows around. Now if I don't like this I'm going to go ahead and go back up to Window, Arrange, and I'm going to go ahead and say Consolidate All to Tabs and it'll put them all back in my tabbed organization. This is actually a really nice way if you're working on multiple files and it's really not about you know dragging and dropping for the copying and, and so forth. It really gives you the most real estate for each picture and that's kind of nice. Now uh, the other thing that you can also do is if you don't like the order uh, in which your pictures are arranged in tabs you can literally just click and drag it to a new order and so now you can see that this one comes first, this one is second, and now this one is third. And that was actually the order in which we were looking at it in our browser. So sometimes it's a little bit easier um, to keep your images organized. Maybe if you didn't open them in the same order that you would actually want to look at them in, then you can drag your tabs around and you can have a different kind of organization. Now if you're on a Macintosh computer, you can go up to Window and you can go down here where it says Application Frame it's going to by default open up in an application frame and what that means is that it fills the screen and you can see currently it's checked so right now we're looking at the application frame it fills the screen and it's also going to scale the entire Photoshop uh, application window together so you might be wondering why I'm bringing this up and that is because it used to be a default behavior on Apple computers and some previous versions to not have the application frame be visible. Instead you would see the background of your desktop. So if I were to go up to Window and take that off, you would see all of the stuff that is back here behind. Actually I don't really have anything, so if I wanted to like move this over and go back to Photoshop, you would see that you, you could actually see the desktop contents on the background. And that's very cluttersome for some people and so the application frame is nice and I 
believe that that's probably one of the reasons they made that default. And also it makes it consistent with the Windows computers. So for most of the tutorials, I'm going to be choosing to use the application frame for consistency. Um, and I'll go ahead and drag this back. Okay. So uh, the other thing too that you can change if you don't like the way that some of the defaults are is if you go up to preferences and then um, you go to interface, you'll see here that it's got open documents as tabs, which if you don't like that, you can deselect it. I like that, so I'm gonna leave it selected. And another one is enable floating document window docking. And if you don't want to be able to do the floating document window stuff, then you can disable that, but we'll, we'll just leave it on. Um, but I just wanted to show you that option. Um, another thing that you can do in terms of navigating, you know, not necessarily between your images, but like how your image looks on the screen is down here in the toolbar at the very bottom. If you click and hold, you'll see that there are some different ways that you can look at the screen. Right now we have currently selected the standard screen mode and then just below it is full screen mode with menu bar. So if I click that, you see that it gives me a little bit more real estate and it collapses some items. For instance, it collapses, you know, my little close button. Um, and then if I click and hold down here, again, it goes into full screen mode. It's going to give you a warning that you can get out of full screen mode by pressing F or escape. The other thing that you can do is go and move your mouse to the left side of the screen, for instance, to get one of the menus to show up and then you can get out of it. Now what's interesting is that depending on the settings on your computer, the F and the escape might not work the way that you would expect it to. So let me just show you if I go to full screen. Another thing that I can do is I can just put my mouse over here and then I get this icon again where I can click and hold and I can go back to standard mode. Okay, so that's a really simple way to learn how to get around. And uh, the other thing too is that I want you to sh notice that up here, and we'll talk a little bit more about panels and interface uh, organization, but up here at the end of the options panel, you'll see that there's a drop down menu that has some words like essentials, uh, 3D, motion, and so forth. These are standard arrangements for you to uh, be able to look at your files and your panels and so forth all together. And let's see, like if you are someone who uses 3D graphics a whole lot, then maybe some standard panels that you might want would be some of these panels, right? But if you, for instance, like to do photography a lot, some of the ones that you might like to use are things like the histogram and adjustments and layers and so on. And so it has some pre-configured options for the way that your panels can be arranged. Essentials is just what it says is essentials. And we'll show you later how you can actually create your own panel setup and save it as your own custom workspace. But that's what these things are, is that they're workspaces. And you can also reset them if your essentials gets uh, modified so that you can always reset and go back to the way that it was. Okay, that's going to do it for this tutorial.